What's going on everybody? It's your boy Daryl. I'm back again. Another tutorial. This one is super in-depth. I know I've been teasing and teasing and teasing this uh, rusted master sword from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for quite some time. Uh, it was a very labor-intensive project. There are a lot of crazy techniques and things that I do in this video that I really want you guys to pay attention to and to go out and try yourself because I think that some of the things that I did here you'll be able to replicate on other props just get super creative have fun with it and uh, yeah it's, it's a learning experience you know I learned along the way I taught myself some stuff playing around with Bondo which I usually trash talk because Bondo smells terrible if you got some I think you should use it in other ways than just filling gaps, you know, like creating obscure texture on top of your props. Also, big shout out to Imperial Surface. Sam at Imperial Surface hooked me up with uh, a ton of amazing paints. Uh, Luma Luster, Shrapnel. I have some of the uh, candies that they sell, the squeeze box candies that I use in this project to create the faux rust on the blade itself. So yeah, stay tuned. This one is fun. I had a blast, enjoyed the video, like it, share it, thumbs up. You know how we do over here, so I love, baby. Let's get to it. Shout out to Uncle Jesse and Andrew Sink for the amazing resin laps. First off, we're going to use a little gap filling technique with some baking soda. Here it is in a cup, shake it around. We're gonna fill these gaps with baking soda and some super glue or CA glue or cyanoacrylate glue by putting baking soda over the gap, squirting on some super glue, blowing off the excess. I picked up this super glue from my local hobby shop. It's not as good as the Bob Smith stuff, but. You can kind of see here what I'm talking about as far as the gaps go. A couple little holes left, but we're getting rid of them. Next is my go-to, the U-Pull Fantastic Spot Putty. I love this stuff way more than Bondo. Um, it dries in like 15 minutes. I just smear it on with a glove the same way you would with Bondo. Fill those seams, let it dry, sand it back. And here's the blade after I've done a couple passes of sanding. I've knocked down the spot putty and I'm just going over the spots again with a little light wet sand. Yes, I know, wet sanding. I do this mainly to keep the dust down, but it also does help with getting you a nice flat sheen for your base coat of black. Now, once your prop is sanded to your heart's content, go ahead and grab your go-to spray filler primer. I'm using Duplicolor because it works great for me. Uh, most Rust-Oleum products do not, so you rarely see me use them. This is where the magic begins. After I went ahead and sanded back the filler primer, I used the Duplicolor Sandable Black to coat the entire piece. And this is what we do before we clear coat and add our metallic. But before we get to the metallic stage, like I said in the intro, I use Bondo body filler on this. I use it to create a, a faux rust texture all over the blade in various locations. Uh, you're going to need yourself some Bondo. You're going to need some stippling brushes, some hardener, some gloves, and of course, a respirator which I'm wearing, but you can't see. It's there, trust me. Now Bondo's mix ratio with the hardener is kind of tricky. It says to use like, you know, so much of Bondo with so much cream hardener. I just went with various quantities of each, just making sure to mix it really well. I'm also using this Wham Bam silicone mat, and you will see why later. 
also to stretch your bondo a little bit more you can get some acetone you can dip your brush in acetone and then in the bondo and we're just going to stipple this all over in the areas that we want to create that faux rust texture now i know it doesn't look like much now but trust me this oatmeal will turn to rust Like I said previously, I didn't have an exact mix ratio, so sometimes this stuff kicked faster than I'd like. And as you can see, I'm still mixing up more Bondo, more stippling. It's nasty, but you can't replicate this any other way. And here we have it the blade is covered in all of our sexy oatmeal stippling next we're gonna do something with that dried bondo that's laying on my wham bam silicone mat so with the dry piece of the bondo you can actually pick these pieces off and uh, use them to add even more textural depth you're gonna to want to mix up some more bondo too because you're gonna place these in suitable locations throughout your piece and you're gonna use more bondo and stipple it on there so it dries it into place. I also use super glue just to kind of, you know, gauge where I want it at. Helps it, you know, just stay there, but we're gonna blend it with Bondo as well. Oh look, like I said, stipple Bondo to blend. Got some Bondo, got this crappy old paint paintbrush, and we're just gonna add it, you know, stipple it in there, blend it in, grab you some more dried pieces of oatmeal, skin flakes, whatever you wanna call them. Oh, look at this, so satisfying. Kinda disgusting. But you see where I'm going with this, right? And with that, we've added some chunk and some depth to this entire piece. I'm telling you, this really sells it. it. It beats just using paint to make faux rust over something. It just adds a little bit more textural depth and makes it more artistic, baby. Yeah. So if you watched my How to Chrome video, you kind of already know where we're going with this. We're going to take some 2K Show Clear. We're going to mix it up to its mix ratio of 2 to 1. Uh, so you're gonna need you some mixing cups, but we're also gonna take some Alumalite black resin dye and tint it with that as well to give us a richer, deeper, darker black that we spray over this piece. Look at it, just just look at it. It's like onyx diamond, it's so gorgeous. You can't tell me this is not a sexy black black. Next, secret sauce time, Aluma Luster shot through my crappy Amazon touch up gun. Just goes to show, it's all technique. You don't necessarily need super expensive spray equipment to lay amazing chrome finishes.
curious what it looked like after that secret sauce has been laid, baby. Yeah. Nice, shiny, chrome, metallic. Perfect to rust up and beat to hell. All right, so here are some of the paints that I got from Imperial Surface. The Howler I'm mixing with an intercoat, which is a clear coat that you can lay on top of a base coat. It needs to be reduced. You can add colors to it. Now, these paints do not have carriers, hence why I am using a inner coat with it. And we're just going to mix this up and we're going to spray it down. This is going to be the base for our rust. It's going to be super bright, which is fine, because with later weathering, we can uh, go ahead and knock that down various opacities to get what we want. Moving on to the handle on the cross guard, off camera I went ahead and did the same steps that I've done previously on chroming, but this time we're going to be using this candy sugar plum, it is a purple. I know some of you uh, Legend of Zelda faithfuls are going to yell at me and say, oh the handle in the cross guard of the master sword is supposed to be blue. Well guess what, I wanted to paint something purple, I think that it looks extra sexy this way, and that's the color I went with. So here you go. It's purple, baby. I mean, yeah, it's supposed to be blue, but I mean, look at this purple. You, you can't deny this color. It is absolutely gorgeous. So that's why I went with it. Sometimes you gotta go with pretty over screen accuracy, right? Now that everything is painted, it is time to weather. With this, we're just gonna take some burnt umber, some raw sienna, a little bit of black. We're gonna mix this all up and just slather it on the piece, removing it with a shop towel. You know how we do weather. Just get in all the nooks and crannies and crevices, don't be afraid. With this, the dirtier the better because I want this to look world used or world found. So I don't want it to be particularly clean. Now we're going to take these three colors. We're going to mix them up in a cup, the black, the chromes, and we're going to stipple them all over the exposed metal. Be mindful of the rust because we want this blade to have a really worn and beat up look to it. Can't have it looking all shiny and metallic. And if you saw my video on the Sylvie Crown weathering uh, realistic metals, this is what I'm doing to the end of the sword. Just kind of dry brushing in a cross-hatching pattern across the entire piece. And of course we couldn't forget about the uh, cross guard fabric. So I found this green ribbon that I'm just gonna use and super glue it into place and dirty it up with some weathering to kind of match the entire sword. Now that the fabric's on, let's roll on over to the beauty shots, baby.
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I know there was a lot to unpack in there. I tried to edit it down in a way that was easily digestible, but I think the results speak for themselves. This was a very uh, fun project for me. Something a little bit out of the normal from your helmets and helmets and helmets. So we got the Master Sword now. I'm gonna build a display stand for this and put it somewhere in my house. I don't know, maybe I'll sell it or give it away. Who knows, but hope you guys learned something from this video. Like I said, I had a blast making this thing. And uh, as always, all the products used will be linked in the description below. And remember, never be afraid to suck at something new. Catch you in the next one. Peace.